my name is Jamie Elkill and I'm the Vice President of Youth and Transition Aged Youth Services here at VOA Alaska. I am a licensed master social worker as well as a chemical dependency clinical supervisor and today we'll be reviewing some clips. I'm ready to communicate with you now. Communicate? Tell you my secrets? The dynamics in this scene are fascinating for so many reasons. It's moving to see a child so young using such a direct phrase of, I'm ready to communicate with you now. It's rare that children, especially those with trauma or mental health concerns, are able to that clearly and effectively communicate their needs in the moments they need us most. The relationship between the mother and her son is shown through her immediate attention to her child at this statement. Her nonverbal, such as turning her body towards him, giving him her full attention and eye contact indicated that she was ready to hear what he was wanting to communicate to her. Ghosts. You see ghosts, Cole? This seems to empower him through trust and connection to share this deep secret with his mother, even though he probably knows it's going to be hard for her to hear. This type of parent-child relationship indicates a secure attachment bond which is what we typically strive to see between caregivers and children. Grandma comes to visit me sometimes. Cole, that's very wrong. Grandma's gone, you know that. Now the dynamics change when the conversation shifts to the grandmother. Mom says, that's very wrong, challenging his statement about seeing his grandmother who had passed away. She wanted me to tell you. Cole, please She stop. wanted me to tell you she saw you dance. Grief shows up for us differently, and we see mom engaging in some defense mechanisms, intellectualizing that this can't be true, and at one point asking him to please stop. His insistence, paired with his mother's emotional vulnerability, creates what can be called parentification of the child, where there's a slight role reversal between child and parent or caregiver. This often looks like children taking on roles of the parent, such as comforting their parent, taking care of their parent, or even at times taking care of younger siblings or other family members. She said, the answer is every day. What did you ask? <laughs> do, do I make with caregivers who are struggling medically, mentally, financially, or even in situations like this one where the family is grieving a loss together, children can move into parental roles as a coping mechanism. In this case, the child has a problem that exposes him to more complex adult situations, and he's more likely to take on this type of supportive caregiving role for his mother who misses her mother and is concerned about her being proud of her. <laughs> I found a junior hockey league right here in San Francisco, and get this, tryouts are tomorrow after school. What luck, right? Hockey. Uh-oh, what do we do? Guys, uh, th 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 this, uh, here, you, you pretend to be Joy. Wouldn't it be great to be back out on the ice? Oh yeah, that sounds fantastic. This scene is so fun and really highlights common dinner table conversations between caregivers and youth. The family is discussing their new home in San Francisco, and we can see that the move is recent. There's packing boxes in the background, folding table and chairs for dinner, they're eating takeout, and just overall it's gray, packed, sterile environment around the family. Mom tries to be encouraging by telling Riley that she found some information on how she can join her favorite sport. We get a sneak peek of what is going on with Riley's emotions at the time, and essentially even her emotions don't know how they actually feel. What was that? That wasn't anything like joy. Uh, because I'm not joy? Yeah, no kidding. This turns into panic and ultimately attempts to mask the panic and fear with what would joy do or maybe what would joy look like? Because of the discrepancy between what Riley is feeling and showing, 
This adds further stress to the situation. If you've ever felt conflicting feelings while wanting to make your parent proud, you'll understand how this feels. With a nice pass oh, over the reed, oh, comes across that right. right. <clears throat> when mom calls in reinforcements with dad, the situation becomes worse when he repeats the question. Ah, so Riley, how was school? With Riley becoming agitated. Boo, I'll be joy. School was great, all right? Riley, is everything okay? <sighs> dad was not successful in connecting with his daughter in this moment, so he leans into correction. This creates an instant power struggle between Riley and dad, with Riley becoming further dysregulated and engaging in defense mechanisms, yelling shut up to get away from the discomfort she is feeling. What is your problem? Just leave me alone. Sir, reporting high levels of sass. Take it to DEF CON 2. You heard that, gentlemen, DEF CON 2. <laughs> Listen, young lady, I don't know where this disrespectful attitude came from. Two themes appear here, coping with transitions and parent-child relationships. Change is hard at any age. With adolescents, they're undergoing immense internal and external change. And any additional environmental, relational, and biological changes are extra stressful. With any change, we need a transition period. This might include grieving and acknowledging the loss of what we once had. Even when the change is good, the unknown is scary. Foot is down, the foot is down. With transitions, finding ways to make the unknown known can be helpful in navigating the emotions and providing consistency and safety for youth. For Riley, it's unclear based on this clip if she had eaten yet that day, or if she had slept well. Perhaps her bed hasn't been put together yet and she's tired after sleeping in a sleeping bag in an unfamiliar house with strange noises. Her window of tolerance is much smaller than usual. Good job, gentlemen. That could have been a disaster. I knew you were having a hard time, but I had, I had no idea that you were, that it was, well, you're so brave, honey. I'm so proud of you. Really? Um, because I was actually having second thoughts. This scene is all too familiar for those who work in acute care inpatients, residentials, or any behavioral health setting that involves working with individuals who may be required to engage in treatment. From what I gather in this clip, he may have sought help on his own, but then upon admission, had second thoughts. Oh, no, hon. I think, um, you know, the doctor said they need you to stay here for a couple days for um, observation. I think that's a, a real good idea. But um, I don't think you really understand, okay? Therapy is scary. Working on yourself is scary. It's hard work, and it's normal to wonder if we've made the right choice. For Craig, he mentions that some of the people in here are really messed up, indicating that he might think he's in the wrong place. I think we better leave it up to the doctor's discretion, you know? Sometimes we hold beliefs that our problems aren't as bad as others. This can become problematic if we minimize our own issues and don't get the help we need. And sometimes the help we need isn't the help we want. And that's a tough thing to accept. We've tried and they're professionals. They can help you in ways that we can't. Something I noticed about Craig's parents is that first and foremost, they showed up. Having your child admitted to a psychiatric unit is challenging. It's important that Craig's mom acknowledges that Craig needs more help than they can provide. That's okay. Her statement of, you were so brave, honey, is endearing and supportive. And true, it is so difficult to make the decision to seek help honestly, and her acknowledgement and validation of this choice is helpful, along with the encouragement to trust the professionals. And I think it's, uh... It looks like a real nice place. Right, George? <laughs> when can I join? Personally, I love this. Using humor as diffusement and a coping skill is great, especially for those close relationships that allow for that type of banter. It can take the seriousness of the situation down a notch, and it helps to bring familiarity and comfort to the conversation. Craig is still Craig, and he needs to know that his parents still love him, are proud of him, and that life can be normal and fun. And if nothing else, in these situations, simply being present, listening, and showing love while supporting the change process is more impactful than we realize. <laughs>